Welcome to Revival Hour, a moment of refreshment, transformation, learning, and testimonies. Do well to stay focused, make use of your writing and learning materials, and prepare to be blessed. Can we just begin to bless the name of the Lord this morning? Let's give Him all the praise that He deserves. Father, we bless you. We give you the praise and glory. We magnify you. We bless your mighty name. We thank you, mighty God. Father, we worship you. Lord, we're going to bless him this morning. Father, we thank you. 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 Thank you for bringing us again to your presence. Thank you because in your presence, the Bible says, there is fullness of joy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The psalmist says, Blessed is the man whom the Lord chooseth and causeth to approach before him, that he may fill him with all the goodness of his house. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We give you the praise and the glory that you deserve. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Shada baga balata namanada. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. For all of the glory belongs to you. Shinama kopala gabaratana mandos. All of the glory belongs to you. One more, in one minute, you're going to pour out your heart of gratitude unto the Lord this morning. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. All of the glory belongs to you. For my hallelujah belongs to you. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for calling us again to your presence this morning. We magnify your name. We give you all the praise that you deserve. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and Amen. Shout the loudest hallelujah. I want to welcome each and every one of us to Revival Hour this morning. If you have not shared the link on your status, please do well to share the link right away. Invite your friends, invite your loved ones, invite your family members. Share the link to them. Tell them that we are live. Do that quickly. Do that quickly. Do that quickly. Share the link to them. Tell them we are live. Share the link to them. Tell them we are live. Share the link to them. Tell them we are live. Put it up on your status. Come on, do it right now. Don't be ashamed of putting up this meeting on your status. You never might tell who would join and who would be blessed. So please do that. Please do that, every one person. Put up the link on your status. There are a lot of persons that are yet to still join us. You belong to any of the group chats. Send the link there. Tell them that we are live. They can tune in. They can join in right away. We are about to have an amazing time in God's presence. So please share the link quickly. Share the link quickly. I have not seen a number of persons do that. Do that immediately. Also, don't just put it up on your status. Do what to share to someone personally and tell the person we are live. Sister Ayomiko, the link is not yet on your status. Share the link on your status. Don't just share the flyer. Share the link so it will be easy for people to join. Do that quickly, every one person. You are hearing me, you're a first timer. Please do well to get the link, either from the group or wherever you can. And just share the link there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Let's do that quickly. Just have 60 seconds to do that. And then we come back to join in. Hallelujah. Let's do that quickly. Let's do that quickly. We just have 60 seconds to do that. Please share the link. Share the link. Share the link. Hallelujah. So, this morning we are going to be looking at a very powerful teaching. It's not going to be so long. And it's going to be very interactive. Walking in purpose. Remember we established um, purpose discovery last week. And I taught you on different ways to find your purpose. So I want to know how many people followed last week. What are the different ways by which you can discover your purpose? If you can't drop it on the Mixilla chat section. I will have a gift. I will give gifts to the number of persons that can do that quickly. <laughs> as long as you don't repeat another person's point. On Mixilla or on WhatsApp. First, people to mention all the points. Not all, but so you can mention one point. You still get the gift anyways. What are the points? Or what are the ways by which you can discover your purpose? Anybody there? So please, um, the secretary should help me take note of the people that will answer on time. So that they can get their gifts. <laughs> what are the ways by which you can discover your purpose? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Nobody yet. Ways by which you can discover your purpose. There's no one yet. Mm. All right. I remember I mentioned last week, I spoke about prayer. I spoke about finding your purpose. Okay, there are people mentioning are the people saying things? Oh, I've already answered. I don't know whether it's the network labs, but I've already answered the question, so no more gift anymore. So I, I think I spoke about prayer. I spoke about discovery from the Word of God. I spoke about giftings and talents. I spoke about um, situations, how situations can be pointed out to discovering what God wants us to do. And this morning we're going to be looking at we're going to be looking at walking in purpose. What are the important points to consider if you effectively want to walk in purpose? What are the points that you should consider? What are the things you should take note of? What are the things you should take, uh, you should um, look at if you want to effectively walk in purpose? And these keys are very, very, very important. Why these keys are very important is because I feel like a lot of persons in this generation do not understand what it means to walk in purpose. And that's why they get tired, they get weary, they don't want to continue anymore with doing what God has asked them to do. Or to even do these keys, basically, they apply not just to purpose, but to every area of your life. All right. If you understand these keys and you follow them practically, every area of your life is also going to experience a tremendous, um, experience tremendous progress also. So it's important that these keys are not just important as regards walking in purpose, but they also, uh, relate to every other area and every other aspect of our lives and endeavors. Amen. So number one key, let's start from Matthew chapter 16 and verse 22. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 22, a very popular reading. The Bible says that if your eyes be single, then your whole body shall be full of light. One of the first keys, and to me is the most important key when you have to walk in purpose, is focus. The ability to focus. The ability to focus. I heard of a statistics of recent, I don't know how true that is and i don't even know i didn't research about it i just heard it from someone that um the ability for a man to focus the measurement by which a man can focus has reduced in our generation to just be only two minutes so somebody the maximum a person can focus is just two minutes after two minutes the person begins the mind begins to wonder about you know if he's praying the mind begins to think of other things if the person is walking the man is tempted to touch his phone just after two minutes. So the focus or the attention span of every human has greatly reduced in our generation. And this is a problem because this now tends to affect how we walk. This now tends to affect what we do. This now tends to affect even our purpose. Our relationship with God is also greatly affected by these factors. Greatly affected by this factor. The ability to focus has greatly reduced. 
People don't focus on things anymore. So you see someone trying to start up a business and in the next few days, the person's already tired. You see someone becoming a worker somewhere, joining a workforce or um, being a volunteer somewhere or even in friendship, even in relationship and after two months, three months, the person's already tired. This is the same reason why the divorce rate in our generation is greatly high. Because people don't tend to focus. They get into a relationship and then they see other people, they see other potentials and their mind begins to wander all about the place. Focus is a non-negotiable factor if you would need to work in purpose. Focus. If you check your daily activity, how much are you giving attention or how much do you give attention to your purpose and the things God will want you to do or the things God has given you to do? How much attention have you given to those things? In your whole full day schedule, in a whole full week schedule, how much importance do you place on the things God has asked you to do? And it's very important for us as young people in fact, I wrote down here that one of the reasons why focus, well, it looks like focus is something of the past in our generation, is because of social media. We must learn to regulate social media. I wrote something that is going to be on my Instagram very soon, and I think I'm going to say it now, and it's very, very important. Pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot effectively focus when you don't restrict what you see, what you hear, and what you watch. Let me say that again. You cannot effectively focus when you don't restrict the things you see, the things you hear, and the things you watch. You can't. I was going through my Instagram, it was yesterday, and in fact, some of all these blogs, I'll just find a day and unfollow all of them. I don't know why I'm following them or how I ever started following them in the first instance. So, I was going through my Instagram some days yesterday and I came across a post and they said a 20 year old guy bought his girlfriend a car as a birthday gift or something like that. And when I looked at the video very well, I discovered that from observation and we know you know what i'm talking about the guy was definitely into yao yao you know yao yeah you know yao uh -huh. when you try to you know you do those things some of you understand what i'm saying i don't need to break it down we all know yao yao if you don't know yao yao yeah except you are not a nigerian and if you are not a nigerian you can indicate i will explain if there are non nigerians many that are in this place hey, i will explain but if you're in Nigeria, you all know Yahoo Yahoo. Definitely, there was either a Yahoo boy as your neighbor, or when you were in school, there was either a Yahoo boy that was in your department, or one way or the other, you share experience the Yahoo boys everywhere. So, it's a normal thing. And there are a particular tribe of people that are being known for Yahoo Yahoo. And a particular state, too, that it is very, very dominant in their area. <laughs> all the people from Ogun State, all those Ogun State people, uh, those people that... Are not really in Lagos, but are in Lagos. All those good state people, you know, they have to, they do. And people that are from Benin, praise the Lord. If you are from Benin, I love you very much. <laughs> so we all know what Yao Yao is and all of that. So I saw that the guy bought his girl a car. Now, a random girl, clear mind, child of God, someone that has no issue, will now go on social media and see that post. Let me tell you this. <laughs> everything you see and everything you watch plants a seed in your heart. No matter how much you, you try, no matter how much you deny, everything you see and everything you watch would eventually plant a seed in your heart. This is why I said that you cannot effectively focus when you don't reduce what you see, what you hear and what you watch. Everything you see, everything you watch, would always plant a seed in your heart. No matter what, you, no matter how it is, is it a seed of lust, a seed of arrogance, a seed of pride, a seed of covetousness? So, 
a random girl will just go and see that person and say, just look at this guy now. He go by, he gets to head. And someone like that can begin to put his boyfriend under pressure. <laughs> you go on social media, you see people doing things, or even in your area of calling, you see people doing a whole lot of things, and somehow, somehow you begin to look at what God has called them to do, and ignore what God will have you do. Maybe you go on social media and you see one of my great friend preacher Jay doing his evangelistic mission. Souls are being saved. People are coming out. Healings are taking place. And somehow you that you are called to be a teacher, you begin to get the temptation of going to go and do crusades too. It is dangerous. You must learn how to put a restriction on social media if you effectively want to focus. You must learn how to. You must learn how to. Put a restriction on social media. Restriction per se, it might not necessarily be, um, be shutting out social media completely. But however, you can unfollow some blogs, you can unfollow some pages that you should not follow. There are some people you should not follow. There are some people you should not follow. Believe us, hear me. There are some people you should not follow on social media. You go to a page, you see that most of the pictures there is a girl being naked. Or some of the pages, what they talk about, erotic content. And you are following those kind of pages. Why? Even individuals. Once somebody begins to post nonsense, for me, someone like me, once you post nonsense the first time, post nonsense the second time, post nonsense the third time, I've muted you. There is no this thing. There are people that like to post memes. I enjoy memes sometimes. It makes me to laugh. However, there are some memes I don't consider funny. Once you post it the first time, post it the second time, post it the third time, I will mute you. In fact, as I'm speaking with you, the number of people I can see their status right now, I'm not sure in my whole content they are up to 50. And half over 1,000 content um, um, people. I'm not sure they are up to 50. I must learn to restrict the things I see. If you're always posting news and negative things, I've muted you. Every day, you are always posting bad news. Today, oh, bandits kill 20. Tomorrow, bandits kill 40. Next tomorrow, somebody has died. Next, next tomorrow, dollar has increased. Uh, Naira has fallen. Every day, there is always a bad thing to put on your status. I don't want to see it. I learned from Bishop Oedekbo that if you watch news too much, you cannot make news. They that watch news cannot make news. You can be updated on happenings, but however, when you put your focus on news, you can never make news. You must be, there must be a restriction to the things you see, the things you watch, and also the things you hear. Some of the songs you listen to, some of the music you listen to, those things are not ideal. I said that even what you listen to can plant a seed in your heart. Many of the songs you listen to, they are not ideal. Believers, listen to me, and this is very, very important. Many of the songs you listen to, they are not ideal. They are not accepted. I think I spoke about this sometimes back. You cannot be listening to songs that 90% of the lyrics is vulgar words. Now, in our, the musicians in our time, they all talk about women, talk about bum bum, talk about chest. Those are the things that it, everything revolves around it. There's even a song like that. <laughs> you know, I, I tend to hear all those things. And I'm, oh, you know, by now, I'm a very, very honest person. Someone even come out to sing that, that she, you know, that the whole world revolves around a woman's boom boom. And that is what a believer will put in the ear and be listening to. Now, think about it. If I had not listened to that one, will I even know the lyrics now? No. But because of society, because of workplace, they will play all those things. You have no choice but to hear. Especially if you not carry your earphone. Somebody will come out and sing that the whole world, the whole world, seven continents, revolves around the woman's bum bum. And believers will carry those kind of music and play and put in their ear. You can't focus. Even as a student, if you can master the act of focus as a student, you will be a successful student. If you can master the act of focus in ministry, in business, you will be a successful businessman and you will be a successful minister. 
Many times, the kind of training I had being a student, very rigorous. Sit down seven hours, do not touch your phone. Seven hours. If you perish, you perish. Sit down seven hours, don't touch your phone. There's nothing like, oh, Pastor Peter, let me just check. Don't check updates. Drop your phone. Seven hours. Read. The only break you have is to drink water. No home break to urinate. Sit down. Do you know that kind of focus? You sit down on a matter for seven hours. No phone, nothing. Seven straight hours. Bam. You can sit down on your work, your assignment. One week, don't look at anything else. One of the things God told me in the beginning of this year was to mute some people. Even people that I look up to, people I love, people I respect, God told me to reduce the way I look at them. So I don't get the temptation of trying to pattern my ministry and my lifestyle after them. Even if I love them. But I am unique. Listen to me. You were not created to be a carbon copy or a photocopy of any man. You are unique in your own way. Listen, if God wanted to create a photocopy, then there wouldn't have been the need for the original. Let me say that again. <laughs> if God wanted to create a photocopy or a carbon copy of a person, then there would never have been the need for the original. You are unique in your own way. You must focus on the things God has planted in you and the things God will have you do. Pay attention to it. Maximize it. Everything, potential, great thing God has planted in you, pay attention to it. And release those potentials to the world in a manner that has never been done before. Also, one of the important points that you must recognize as regards focus is that you must pay attention to little things and big things. Let me tell you this. I work with a number of young persons and I can tell you this is a major challenge. People don't pay attention to things. Hi, God. It is, it is a great challenge in our generation and I don't even know. Sometimes people tend to feel that probably I'm old school or something. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. But we must learn to be many people listening to me as little as their personal welfare their health they don't pay attention to it if i ask everybody now to submit an essay on why farmers are greater than doctors if i ask everybody now to submit an essay you would see good write-up good content great idea but yet still a lot of mistakes. You can't do well if you don't have a personal passion and a personal crave for excellence. We don't pay attention to little things. Sometimes I tend to walk I tend to multitask a lot. And I work, I can, maybe something like yesterday now, I can do almost 10 things at the same time. Almost 10 things at the same time. I'm always that fast. In fact, if you get to see me work, <laughs> first, I don't even like to smile. I don't want anybody to distract me. I don't want any greeting because the moment I'm working and somebody begins to ask me a question, it can distract me. So I don't even like it at all. I don't even want, I don't even entertain it. But I can do 10 things at the same time. Look at yesterday now. I had administration in the night. I have administration this morning. I have major meetings coming up. Major, major meetings coming up soon. I'm going to announce those things later. I also write for a number of companies. I don't just write Christian content. I write for a number of companies. I do social media management for a whole number of companies. If you check all the companies and people I work for, there are over five plus ministry. And so, when I say I sit down to work on 10 things at the same time, I know what I'm saying. So, when I find an individual, maybe someone working with me personally, and the person was giving something to do, and the person said he forgets, or the person, the first question I ask is this, what were you thinking of? 
Where has been your mind? What are you thinking about? Sometimes it goes beyond the fact that the person forgot. I, I, I will sit the person down. So yeah, sit down. Let us discuss. What is bothering you? You are doing only one thing. Many of you listening to me, you are just doing only one thing. And the only thing you are doing is to read your books in school. And yet still, you can't pay attention to little things. God will only empower you to do more when you have mastered the act of doing the little that he has given you first. God cannot give you a new level when you have not fully maximized your present level. Only one job that you are doing. One job. You can't pay attention to that work. You can't pay attention to your books. You can't pay attention if you are serving you are serving in only one place, in only one capacity. And yet people can still find a lot of errors in what you are doing. You must learn to pay attention to little things. Little things. Those little things that you think they don't matter, they matter. They do matter. You must learn to appear. Even the way you dress, you just wear anything and go out. See, let me tell you. Let me tell you something. And I hope this helps you. Are we learning something today? I hope this helps you. Because what I'm teaching you is in every area of your life, this will help you. <laughs> you would only attract what you give out. Let me say that again. And I'm going to explain this. You would only attract what you give out. If you are a person that does not pay attention to excellence, you would attract people that are not excellent. If you are a person that don't pay attention to a whole number of things, you would ultimately attract the people that... Let me, let me, let me, let me say this. <laughs> For instance, you are going out. And you just carry any squeeze cloth and wear. And you are now believing God that the man that should ask you out should be the son of a senator. Hello, is not Nollywood. Hello, sir. Hello, ma. It's not Nollywood. Maybe it's too much Nollywood that you have washed. That you will see one, one girl that will just tie anything, carry calabash, and the prince is looking for, for her. Maybe it's too much Nollywood that you washed. Hello, sir. It doesn't work that way. So, you see someone that will just tie anything, will just wear anything, and then the prince, it doesn't work that way. You would attract what you give out. If you are attracting the things that you don't give out, it's a matter of time, you will soon attract what you give out. You see so much excellence that we pay, so much things and how much we pay attention to. Only revival hour. Only revival hour, there's a microphone. Only revival hour, there is something to control the sound. Only revival hour, there's intro, there's outro. At the beginning of revival hour, it was the one, you, were, you, used to, you had one sweet voice. Hello, welcome to revival hour. Uh, blah, 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 blah. You were hearing all those things. You think we just put all those things together because we're jobless? They are the kind of people we want to attract. They are people we want to attract. They are people we want to attract. Day in, day out, we have people tuning into revival hour from almost every continent on the earth. They are the kind of people we want to attract. So, we must begin to package ourselves in such a way that we are not just relevant to only Nigerians, but we are re relevant globally. Let me share a testimony. My own personal page and the things I write, my own personal page and the things I write, tend to attract even more people from outside Nigeria than from neighboring Ghana. And I was thinking about it, why? And I just discovered that the way I have always packaged myself Packaged my words. I pay many of many a times you just come up and you see all those things. Let me tell you the truth. Many times my designers, if you have people, if you know people that design in this ministry, you should ask them. In this ministry, you should ask them. People that design for us. We change designs almost three times. If it does not resemble excellence, I will not even put it out there. Like the current designs now we are using for 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 revival hour. We had to, we had to look for someone outside to do it. Not because our present designers are not good, but because we felt they were overwhelmed 
and we did not want anything less than, less than excellent, we went out to pay money to do a good design. It is a lifestyle. It's a consciousness to have. Pay attention to little things. When I first got into the relationship, one of the major issues I was having with my babe, major, major issues I was having with my babe, she want to write Holy Spirit and Jesus. <laughs> She's yelling me now, and there's nothing she can do. I'm the one that owns the microphone, so and she cannot come and beat me. We, we are not in the same house. <laughs> she want to write Holy Spirit and she want to write Jesus. She will not write the H in small letter. It used to ah, there's a way to do me in my body like this. Eh? There is nothing else that can pain me in this life. In this life, that is someone that wants to write Jesus, wants to write Holy Spirit, wants to write God. And all those other things, I will still use small letter as the first. That Holy Spirit, you're not writing small letter H. Jesus, you're not writing Jesus anyhow. Hey! The way the two will pinch, it, it go, it, you know, you know something will pinch in your body. The two will pinch me like this. Ah! Those were early days. Now she's doing very well. She's an excellent woman. Please, let's clap for her. She's doing very well. Can we, can we clap for her? If you are hearing me, clap for her. Wonder Ida or Mixella on. What's up? Help me clap for her. She's doing a great job. The place she's managing, even not that she's on, <laughs> let me not mention it to the general house. The place she's managing, she's doing, she's now doing a very great job there. But before! I'm not, okay, that time it was early days, so it's not like it is now. She will write, she want to write J, J will be small letter. She want to write H, I could say, which kind of her lap it is. <laughs> you must learn. To pay attention to little things. The money you are using to spend on shawarma is those tiny, tiny money that, that's why you are always broke before month end. It's the reason why you are always broke because you see shawarma, you buy. You see cake, you buy. You see ice cream, you buy. It is only you that used to have craving for big things. You are earning 50,000, but your craving, eh? Your cravings is worth over 200,000. Your salary net worth everything, 50k. But your cravings alone is 200k. You see shawarma, you buy. You see cake, you buy. You wake up in the morning. Oh, this morning I feel like eating pizza. You go and order pizza from Domino. Oh, this evening I feel like just, let me just, I just need to relax. I need some cold stone. You go and buy cold stone. How much is your salary? 50,000. Tight, you will not pay. You will not give. Give to the poor, you will not give. Man of God now that is even preaching to you that is shouting with his voice, you will not still give. Whatever thing that you want, people that are there, that you can even spend those money on or give that money to that God will bless you. You will not give. However, shawarma, cold stone, ice cream, fish, only you, only you, you carry one full fish, put it inside your house. With 50,000 in salary, you know, it's small money, small money, it's not even important, it's small money. All those small, small money by now, it would have built you a house. Those small, small money, if you gather it together now, you for don't buy land, build house. All the money you have used on internet last year, now, you should be driving a car with that money. If they bring all the money you spent on internet last year, Sister Nkechi, if they bring all the money you spent on internet last year, you that you are believing God for a car, that money, it was your car you used to subscribe internet. It was the car that God wanted to give you that you used to, to, to pay for data. You are like this. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot control how you are spending money on internet. Because now you are come, sister Getty. You can't control. You are not doing anything with your phone, no. You are not, you are not winning on Instagram that is talking data. You don't used to watch Zoom. The only thing you use your thing to do is WhatsApp and Mixer. Maybe to join Revival Hour once in a while when God touch your mind. You cannot manage 5k data for a month. 5k is not even too much. 3k. There are even some bundles that if you use 1,000 naira, it will give you a, a, it will give you so many things. 1,000 naira, 2,000 naira, you give you so many. You can give you up to 5 gig. Can give you up to 4 gig. All of that you cannot manage. Your entire prayer, your entire money for car house, you have used it on internet because you don't know how to pay attention to little things. You spend money carelessly. Everybody that is rich today knew how to manage from little to become big. Let me tell you this. And we are not making out. I'm just saying this. As blessed as Restoration World is as a ministry, 
by the grace of God, as blessed as we are, as blessed as we are as a ministry, there are many projects, even in our capacity to do, that I will not still do it. Uh, I'm very stubborn though, when it comes to things like, I'm, you see the phone I'm using, the Android phone I'm using, it was since 2020. During lockdown, that's when I bought that phone. How much did I buy it then? 40,000. One gig gram. Till now. Can't I buy a phone? Can't I buy a better phone? I can conveniently buy a phone of 150,000 and I will not move. Conveniently. But if the aim of phone is to make call, how, what do I need to go and buy? Some people will say, eh, it's poverty talk. It's not poverty talk, oh. Listen, let me tell you. I saw the phone of Reverend Sam Adeyemi and Bishop David Oedipo. In a picture, I saw the phone closely. Reverend Sam Adeyemi, many of you will not believe it. Reverend Sam Adeyemi is using iPhone 8. Go and check his birthday post. Last year, the phone was on the table. Go and check. The phone was on the table. Look at it very well. I'm not sure it was up to iPhone 8. Reverend Samu, with the level that he, Bishop Ede Ponko, I saw one small, small phone for calls. I don't know if there's another phone for internet and other things, but there's one small, tiny phone, like what we call touch lights. The richest pastor in the world for calls. Me, I should not be under pressure. To that. Except I would need it for maybe we need live streaming services and there is no phone that can give us those live streaming services and I need to buy it for it or I need to buy it because of business. Then I'll buy. But to buy those things to make guy, I will not even, I'm that kind of person that will never, see, I'm not under pressure to do anything in this life. Oh, not under, I live according to my size by per time and if I cannot do anything, I will not do it. If I don't, I'm not led to do anything, I would never do it. If I cannot pay for a two-bedroom flat in Abuja, I would rather stay myself contained and remain there. Nobody's putting me under pressure. Nobody's putting gun in my head. If I can't pay for a one-bedroom in Abuja, I will remain there. Nobody's pushing me. Nobody's putting any gun in my head. You must learn to focus, focus, focus. Everybody say focus. Focus. No, they lose guard. You see your friend start using the latest iPhone immediately. You want to go and buy. You are not with any salary. You're a student. You want to go and buy. Don't worry. Shabi, Shabi, is that phone that you, 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 is that phone that will make you pass exams? Pay attention to little things. Alright. Our time is fast spent. And I wrote there. That's from First Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. The Bible says, Give yourself wholly to these things that your profiting may appear to all men. I also wrote here, Know everything and read everything about your assignment. Know everything and read everything about your assignment. I also wrote here, Focus requires diligence and discipline. I've already mentioned all of that. Diligence to your assignment and discipline to the things you should see, the things you should hear, and the things you should watch. Also, very important point when you are trying to focus is that you must learn to set priorities. In fact, focus is impossible when you cannot set priorities. So you must bring out a list of different things. You must bring out a list of all the things that you are paying attention to right now. You have God, your relationship, your family life, ministry, all of that. And set up a priority list, which is more important. For me, the first is God. First is God. Number two is family. My family, both incoming <laughs> and present, I pay attention to it properly. There is no issue anywhere. Then number, 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 that's number two. Then number three is my own personal growth and development. Because if I stop developing, nobody will listen to me. Nobody, there is no ministry anywhere when the leader is not growing. There is nothing you are preaching when you are not growing. So I must develop myself. Ministry in the whole list is like the number five. Work is not like number seven. In the whole entire list of the things I put that I make very important, ministry is God is number one. So some people may ask, Sir, with all your schedules, how do you find time to pray and study? I wake up in the night. As I'm speaking to you, I have not closed my eyes since 
2.30 a.m. I've been up since that time. And it's almost a schedule for me. It's almost a normal life style for me. Wake up early, do my spiritual exercise, do all the things I should do, prepare for revival hour. It's this morning I'm going to sleep. It's now, after revival hour, I'll go and close my eyes and sleep. So you must learn to set a list of things you call or things you claim to be priority in your life. You must learn to set a list of those things and pay attention to it. Also, I've also mentioned that you must learn to starve your distractions, the things that easily beset you, the things that distract you. You must learn to limit them. Praise the Lord. So two points as we try to round off. Thank you, Lord. What are the important um, points in working in purpose? Number two, you must keep improving and increasing your capacity. Remember in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 3, Elijah made a statement. He said there, Go and make available more vessels. Bring in more vessels. Make available more vessels. You need more vessels. If you must be used by God, if you must work in purpose effectively, you must also learn to increase your capacity. Increase your capacity. Increase your capacity. Increase your capacity. Let me share this. And it's a turning point for my life. And I believe it's going to help a number of persons. When we first started ministry, we had only one WhatsApp group. And then we just do, we just used to do this class that we used to call, I think, Hour of Restoration or Restoration Words class or Restoration class. That was the name we called it then. And we just had only one WhatsApp group. And then all we just do is WhatsApp classes. As we would improve, we would do those WhatsApp classes in such a way that people were now beginning to join, 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 join. We had second group, third group, fourth group, fifth group, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, ten. People were just joining all our groups from everywhere. At some point, we discovered that WhatsApp could not take us anymore. We now increased the more capacity. We moved to Telegram. Our Telegram group presently is about 1,700 and something persons there. <laughs> it became overwhelming. We decided to start converting our WhatsApp people and our Telegram people to Mixer, which is currently what we are doing. But the truth about it is that at every point in time, we always increase our capacity. God will not use you beyond how much you are ready to increase your capacity. You want God to use you for nations and continents. You must increase your capacity to that point. Right now, I know where God is taking me to. And I know the kind of audience I'm going to be having. In fact, before now, there has been a great prophecy upon my life and upon the ministry, this ministry, is that we are going to have a strong presence in other nations of the earth, not just in Nigeria. And if you are very observant, you should see that trend in the things that we do and the invitations that I have. I tend to uh, minister in places like Kenya, virtually, Kenya, UK, Ghana, virtually, most of those nations. And it's also the same case for people that now follow me on my social media channels. We have a number of persons right now listening to me that are not in Nigeria. So there have always been that prophecy upon my life. Now, it would be foolish of me To now begin to lower my training, development, and maybe the books I read and the materials I feed on to only people from Nigeria. If I must feed a global audience, I must learn from global leaders. Do you understand what I'm saying now? So, you find me listening to more teachings, reading more books from people not just in Nigeria, but outside Nigeria. Of course, we know Nigeria is the center of revival and basically everything that happens around church and all of that, the center point, the focus is on Nigeria right now. We know all of that. Nigeria generally, we have a global audience. All, Almost all our pastors, our leaders, to some extent, God has blessed them so mightily and they all have a global audience. All right. You see the likes of Apostle Joshua Selman. Apostle Joshua Selman is known all over the world. He has large followers all over the world. Pastor Adeboye, in fact, the Redeemed Christian Church of God is said to be in nations where Nigeria does not even have an embassy. Over 190 nations of the world. Same with Bishop David Oyedekpo. And a number of them, Pastor Jerry Aze, is doing his prayer program right now. And people are tuned in from all over the world. So Nigeria generally, all our preachers, all our ministers, all our pastors, they tend to have this global recognition, which is good. But, for me, I would not just be trained only by them. 
I must be trained by everybody. I must find ministers in every continent, churches in every continent, see what they are doing, learn from them if I must affect a global audience. So, this is what I'm saying. If God has called you to do a certain thing, or a certain thing rather, to affect your community or to affect your state or to affect your nation, then it will show in the kind of content that enters you. It will show in the things you feed yourself with. It will show in how you read books. Many people read books. Other people eat books. When I tell my guys to read books, <clears throat> review a book and all of that, it seems so difficult to review one book. <laughs> then I'm afraid for your life. I'm afraid for your destiny. It seems so difficult. Just last week, I got a number of books from Pastor Kingsley Okonkwo. And I'm almost done with them. Pay attention to all these things. If you want God to use you in a particular level, be ready to stretch. You can't be in your comfort zone and expect God to use you. No. Be ready to stretch. Stretch. Stretch yourself. Listen to me. And it is always a burden most times. It's always a burden on me. We are very young. Why then are we sleeping like we are 70? Or acting like we are 80. We are young people. If it's that it is someone that is 40 years old that is speaking to you, you will not be able to relate. But you know that the person for sure speaking to you is also a young person. So you should know that I'm not just speaking from a standpoint of age. I'm telling you what works. You must be ready to stretch. Anything that does not stretch you cannot make you. Write that down. Anything that does not stretch you cannot make you. Let me say it again. Anything that does not stretch you cannot make you. Where the clay pot is made is when it is being stretched. <laughs> Where elastic and plastic is being made is when it is being stretched. Anything that does not stretch you cannot make you. I don't like stress, so comfortable, so mental health, so blah, 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 blah. anything that does not stretch you cannot make you. Let me say it again. Anything that does not stretch you cannot make you. You must keep increasing your capacity to do the things God wants you to do to fulfill destiny. You must keep increasing capacity. I am not where I was three years back. There are people I used to look up to so much and they used to look down on me too three years ago. But now, the distance is far. Because they wanted to remain where they are and do things at their level. I wanted to shoot in a manner. See, I am not even satisfied with this thing we are doing. No. I have, I, I never come to the point where I'm, Pastor Daniel is here asking me. He's one major challenge that he knows that he used to advise me on every day. Pastor Peter is never ever satisfied with any level, no matter how great. We give God thanks, but I always believe that no matter what you have seen, there is more. 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 We have been impacting lives to this level, but I believe that we can impact lives greater than this. We can do more. Something more better can be done. It's a lifestyle that you should have. And finally, as we try to round off, also diligence. We've spoken about that. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. It says, There seeth thou a man diligent in his business. The Bible says, He shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before ordinary men. Diligence. I've spoken about that. Spoken about hard work. Spoken about focus. 
But you see this one I'm talking about increasing capacity. It is where many people have issues. This ability to increase. They get to a level and they relax. You must stretch yourself. Sha? I hope many people listen to all these things I'm saying, basically, probably. There is there is a limit to how much I can say things and how much people can learn. But the truth is, <laughs> I wish I could open my heart and many people see. Many of you, the seeds that you should plant to greatness could take you two, three years, four years, five years. And you've not even started now. So by the time you are thinking about starting, people are already shining. You must learn to stretch. Anything that cannot stretch you will never be able to make you. Every great man you see, every man God is using, trust me, that man has been stretched. Properly stretched. God, who's, if it's God you are working with, God will stretch you. You will make decisions that even you by your own self, you know that you can't do, you can't make those kind of decisions. God will stretch you. Even in the place of prayer, even in place of word study, you must learn to stretch. Anything that does not stretch you cannot make you. If you are under a mentor, you are under a leader that makes everything convenient for you, I'm telling you, you are already failing. The normal pattern of every human, the direction of every human, without self-motivation and without fear, is heading to failure. That is, there is nothing motivating you and there is nobody putting sanction if you do anything wrong. There is no leader correcting you, scolding you if you are doing anything wrong. If you are in that path, the normal path you are heading to, the normal projection is failure. Human beings are motivated by two factors. Either they are self-motivated by motivational speakers or it is fear, sanctions or implications that pushes them to act. That they know that if they don't do this thing now, this thing will happen. Or they must be self-motivated. It is two ways. If those two things are not affecting any human or if those two things are not sponsoring, they are not pushing anybody, then that human is just headed for failure by default. There is nothing like, uh, let me let me be outside the two. It is either you are self-motivated or it is fear that is sponsoring your reason for doing certain things. If you are not in that, anything that does not stretch you cannot make you. Have you been blessed this morning? Have you been blessed this morning? If you've been blessed, come and say it. I've been blessed. I'm not sure you have been blessed. If you've been blessed, let me hear you say I've been blessed. Plus, thank God for his word. Give him praise. Bless him. Magnify him. If you have been blessed, let's give God praise this morning. Once again, thank you for his word. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We bless your mighty name. Be thou glorified. Now begin to ask the Lord for grace. All the things that you have heard, ask the Lord for grace. Ask the Lord for grace. The Bible says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain help in time of need. Can we ask the Lord for grace? Let's ask the Lord for grace. Let's ask the Lord for grace. Ask the Lord for grace. Ask the Lord for grace. I hope you are praying. Shadabala kopari kapali akopana tego so. Father, we ask for your grace. Shambrondos ke venemeno sabala kaparada. Engola brandi ka veno subina kapani ko vene ko prende ko lama na indelia. We believe you have been blessed by today's program. For sponsorship, partnership or inquiries, do message plus 234-8028100885. Plus two three four eight zero two eight one zero zero eight eight eight. Do well to share your testimonies or questions to Restoration Words Gmail account, which is 
restorationwords at gmail.com. You can also follow Pastor Peter Ebong on Instagram at Peter underscore Peculiar and on Facebook at Peter Ebong. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram with Restoration Words and on Mixil with Restoration Words Network. Restoration Words, restoring men back to the Creator.